Hey guys, in this investigation on electromagnetic waves, we are going to expose, do a thought provocative and pictorial representation of the electromagnetic spectrum and understand its applications and the types of electromagnetic waves. Now, what is the expanse of electromagnetic spectrum? What are the different kinds of electromagnetic waves there are? Now, there are, in general, there are seven, but there are more electromagnetic waves which are being discovered and which are being identified different from the ones we are going to discuss today. But we won't be covering that because that's beyond the scope. There are mainly radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, X-rays and gamma rays. And their wavelength ranges from a few kilometers, as seen here, to a few picometers in the case of gamma rays. Now, radio waves penetrate easily to the Earth's surface, but microwaves and infrared don't. On the other hand, the near-infrared and the visible light reaches the Earth's surface very easily. Now, that is mostly because of the particles which are there in the Earth's atmosphere. And thankfully, every other wavelength above visible, that is, uh, sorry, below visible, that is ultraviolet, X-rays and gamma rays coming from uh, outer space to the Earth are absorbed and they do not damage life on Earth as a result. Now, these, these buildings, humans, butterflies, needle point give you a good approximate scale of what the wavelength is really like of these electromagnetic waves. Now, the frequencies relating as, uh, uh, re as uh, with respect to these wavelengths are given here, where visible light's frequency ranges from 10 raised to 14 to 10 raised to 15 hertz in that range. And every other frequency is shaded black because you don't really see those frequencies. You can't see them. With visible light, you can. And the last diagram here, the last cartoon, shows you the temperature of the body which, which, would, which would emit the light most intensively at a particular wavelength. Now, if the temperature of the body was just one Kelvin, the peak wavelength that would be emitted would be in the microwave region. But if the temperature of the body was 10 million Kelvin, it would emit in X-rays. Now, the first, radio, the first electromagnetic wave we are going to study about are feeble in energy, yet they are far-reaching as because they, these are radio waves. And because of their low frequency and high wavelength, they do not scatter so much when they are traveling from one body to the other. And radio waves are pretty well received on the Earth's atmosphere. And because of that, most of the radio telescopes that we use to study about astrophysical objects in outer space, they are made on the Earth's surface and not in, uh, not in outer space. Because the radio waves are easily coming from outer space and they do not really damage any life on Earth. So that's okay. Now radio waves range from around 30 megahertz range to 3 gigahertz range. That's the... Wave, that's the frequency range of radio waves and they are mostly used for telecommunication purposes via transmitters and antennas which are specially designed for those radio waves. Now your Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, telephone, TV, everything uses and even your, yeah, not your broadband, not your broadband, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, TV, mobile phones, all of them use radio waves for information and signal transmission. Now this right down here is the largest radio telescope in the entire world. It does not look like this anymore. This was taken two years ago. This is a radio telescope built by Chinese in China called, abbreviated as FAST. It's the largest radio telescope in the world. And it's trying to detect radio waves 
of a much larger wavelength than detectable by other radio telescopes around the world. And this will help us to study very special bodies in outer space. Another image here that we see here, it's a very famous image popularized by this person right here, Carl Sagan, whom I think you might know him very well. He, this is an image taken by Voyager 1, which is the first satellite to leave the solar system. And as it was about to leave the solar system, it, it turned back and took a picture of the Earth. Now, this pale blue dot, so to speak, is the Earth. And these different streaks of light, the red, green, yellow, are just rays of the sun. So this image was transmitted to us by Voyager to the Earth with radio waves because radio waves are the best way to transmit information from one place to the other, even in outer space. Now, there are bodies in the, in the universe which emit in radio waves. And the, one of the best examples is this supernova remnant around this Crab Nebula. This nebula is pretty well studied and is still being studied today. A nebula is a, is a birthplace of stars, whereas a supernova is a consequence of the death, of an explosive death of a star. Now these dust and gas particles that you see here, they are the ones which are emitting the radio waves which we detect here on Earth. This is one of the best images we have of the Crab Nebula. There are, there are other bodies which emit in the radio waves as a result of their rotation. Now here we see a neutron star, which is one of the stages a star reaches after its death as a supernova. Now it either becomes a white dwarf, a neutron star, or the most famous, a black hole. A neutron star sometimes is seen to rotate about its axis, as seen by the green axis here, and it has its magnetic fields which are shown by the white curves, and it also, as a result, it emits radio waves along the pole, along the axis of the poles of the magnetic field. Now, this is not unlike Earth's case, where the geographic north is not at the same place as the magnetic north. But it's actually on the other side altogether. Now, pulsars can also be studied because they emit radio waves. And pulsars are very good systems for keeping time because they have a very fixed frequency of oscillation, of rotation. The next electromagnetic wave we are going to study about is the all-encompassing shortwave radio, or in other words, the microwaves. Microwaves are, were generally produced using apparatuses like this, called a clistron tube, in which microwaves are produced by decelerating a cathode ray, ex initially accelerated towards the anode, but the anode is given a negative potential suddenly, so all the cathode rays are decelerated, and as a result of these decelerating electric charges, the electrons, you produce microwaves. And of course, you know that microwaves are very important in the case of microwave ovens, where they are responsible for the heat produced in food items. Now, the heat is mainly produced as a result of rotations of water molecules, which are in those food items. When water molecule rotates, it absorbs a lot of energy from the microwaves and gives, out, gives it off as heat to the surrounding food items. Hence, heating it up. Now microwaves are also used in radar systems as opposed to radio is not used in radar systems but it is microwaves that are used in radar systems. And this image on the top right on the top right here is an image of the entire universe and it, it actually signifies the amount of infra it actually signifies the amount of microwave radiation coming to the earth from all over the universe. This is kind of isotropic, and that tells us that the uh, entire outer space, the whole universe, the outer space in the universe, has an average temperature of, of around 3 Kelvin, 
and as a result of three, that 3 Kelvin outer space temperature, everything seems to be emitting microwaves and the universe is seen to expand. The next electromagnetic wave is the infrared as mostly it's associated with heat and when this train is going to move, burning, uh, burning up its coal, it's going to produce a lot of gases such as water vapor and carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide as well. All of these are greenhouse gases which then absorb the infrared radiations coming from the sun and as a result they heat up the earth's atmosphere. Now greenhouse effect is good only to a certain level but what we are experiencing nowadays is beyond the certain level and that is causing global warming. The image you see the blue curves here is a typical vibrational spectrum or an infrared spectrum of a molecule. Now mole different molecules have different vibrational spectrum on the basis of which you can identify them. Now the vibrational frequencies will differ on the basis of their bond energies, the bond lengths and the number of bonds there are between successive atoms in the molecule. So infrared spectrum spectroscopy is very important in chemistry. Next comes the visible light about which I won't have to tell you much and that's the wavelength at which the sunlight peaks. It's actually the green light which peaks. So we get green light the most, most intense light coming from the sun is the green light and it scatters a lot but redder it is, re lesser the scattering that is which is why you use a red light in your cars because it doesn't scatter much and you can see it from very far away even on foggy days. The next comes ultraviolet which is other words for beyond violet. Certain animals such as the scorpion are seen to glow when they are illuminated with ultraviolet light and this is as a, as a result of some chemicals on the surface of their skin, inside the surface of their skin, which glow when they are illuminated with ultraviolet light. Now ultraviolet light is in other words also dangerous when it results in the melting of ice caps and giving you a bad suntan as a result of the ozone layer depletion seen in southern and near the northern poles which is causing more global warming. Now if you see very clearly in certain situations the auroras near the poles on Jupiter also produce ultraviolet rays. Ultraviolet rays are also seen in welding torches as a result of the high temperature it's producing a lot of ultraviolet rays. And these ultraviolet rays should not reach your eyes because they will damage your eyes otherwise. And that is why we use glass helmets, glass screens. Now normal glass absorbs all the UV and as a result your eyes won't be damaged. UV is also used in attracting insects in bug zapper machines to, in, in order to get rid of them in public places such as restaurants. X, the unknown, comes next. X-rays are obviously used in imaging the skeleton and fractures in the human body or animal bodies. X-rays are also used to identify the crystal structure of a particular material by X-ray diffraction. They are also used to determine the purity and the authenticity of certain products of companies. And they are also used in air in airports to, to see what people have brought with them in their luggage, whether there are no metal or very uh, sensitive items in there. The last is the alpha of all omegas, the gamma rays. Gamma rays are mostly produced in outer space by these systems called gamma ray bursts, which are being studied widely by researchers these days. Gamma rays are also produced in fusion reactions in, in all the stars, all the young stars and they are also produced in fission reactions wherein unstable nuclei with a very large number of neutrons go back to a stabler version and in the process emit alpha rays, 
or beta rays or gamma rays and hence give away their energy. Thank you.